Hello and welcome to Gabbit Media. Today we are making low poly animals and you should be able to create any low poly animal if you follow these guidelines. So the first thing to do is set up our background images so you need to go onto the internet and select a side view and a front view of your animal. Then you need to press the N key and then come down to where it says background. Tick background and add image. From there you can scroll down and you can see open. I'm going to find my elephant. So if I press this display mode for file list thumbnails and click that I can actually see my all my references and I want these two images here. I'm going to start with the side and I'll use the front later on as just a reference. Now we won't see it straight away. We're in perspective view. Uh, so we need to change from perspective view to orthographic with five on your numpad like that and then go to side view which is three on your numpad. Note I said side view because the Y is going in this direction because later on we're going to mirror in the X direction which is this direction across here so we'll need to do it from this side. So three on your numpad should be side view and you should have the Y axis, the green going that way and the blue Z going that way. Uh, the way I'm going to do is by deleting the middle cube and inserting a plane. So control A mesh plane. I'm going to rotate around the Y 90 degrees. R Y 90 and then move this into a position where I'm comfortable I can trace around the elephant. Okay so now go into edit mode, press tab and then grab your vertices and you should have your hand over the keyboard around the G key and you can start grabbing these and pulling them into place. Now this is going to start very low poly so we don't want to add any cuts or things we don't need and start with the body of your creature whatever it is. Don't do the legs yet uh, do the body first then do the head um, and then you go into mirror mode then you do the legs. So you can do this in edge mode or vertex mode uh, can get those two. If I press um, control and click you see it extrudes them out. Control and click. So I grab those two control and click and it extrudes them out and I'm just grabbing the vertices and putting them into position. I'm moving those down a bit. Remember I'm not doing the legs yet and in fact that's the area that will become the leg later on. You can also do this in edge mode, the same thing and you can also just press extrude like that with E and then go into the vertices. I'm pressing control tab to go into the vertices and again I'm not doing anything with the legs yet I'm going, going to go either side of the leg for this so that will be my leg eventually. Okay let's do the face. So control click out. Now what I need to do is extrude this. So. Uh, get, grab the faces, face mode, select all with A and again this is control tab to get this menu and extrude. Then delete those faces and you should end up with this. But I do need to make sure that everything's reset to zero for the mirror to work. So I need to go into object mode and press control A uh, and set the rotation and I better set, I'll just reset it all, location and the scale. We should be there now, add modifier, mirror, and there is our mirror. So you, if you have any problems with your mirror and it doesn't look like this, you go back into object mode, in fact I'll do that again, back into object mode and you press control A and reset all your location, rotation and scale. That solves a lot of problems in Blender actually, so if something's not doing what you expect, uh, reset its location, rotation and scale. Okay, let's go back to our mirror. So add modifier mirror and there we go. Now if I uh, go back to my side view which is three on the numpad and select my face here, do that again so I've rotated around, select my face and then the side view I can extrude out and start pulling out the legs. Now you will see that they are attached at the bottom so what I actually need to do before doing that, so let's undo those, then I'm going to do control R to do a loop cut and create a loop cut down there, there. Now I can have the legs coming out of here and it should make a bit more sense. So let's go back to face mode. Let's turn off see-through mode so it's a bit simpler to see. And I think it was this one wasn't it? 
So now I click on that one, go back to side view, and now I can extrude it out and grab it and pull it into place. Now what I've got to be careful of now is that if I go to vertex mode and grab this vertices, can you see I haven't grabbed the one in the background. So what I must make sure I'm doing is turn see-through mode on again, go to the side view, and we have to start box selecting. So A um, to deselect everything, B to box select, and then G to grab. And see, I've grabbed both of those vertices. So three to go to side view. Let's do that again. A to deselect, B to box select, and G to grab. So A, B, G. And I'll just keep repeating that. A, B, and now I can extrude that whole face out. And then A, B, G, like this, A, B, G. The shape is slightly wrong, really. Because he's in a walking pose and I want him in a standing pose, it's not quite going to work. I need a leg really coming down here. Probably the back leg's a bit more suitable. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into vertex mode and select this vertices, pull it along, so now I can extrude the leg from there. So go and select that face, go back into side view and extrude it out. Now I'm going to go back into vertex mode, A, B to box select, G to grab, A, B, G. Okay, so it's looking very basic at the moment. And what we'll need to do now is where the artistic element comes in and we'll need to start breaking it up and making it look a bit more like an elephant. In order to do that, I'm going to have to add some loop cuts. So certainly I'll need one in here, which is control R, loop cut, and down the middle there. Now what I'll do, is start selecting these pieces and then I can slowly make the elephant look rounder. Be careful when you do this because can you see there it's opening up a gap I need to make sure clipping is turned on. If I turn on clipping pull it back in, let go and then pull it back out again it's staying together. Clipping will keep your shape together. At this point I bring in a reference image just so I can see what the elephant looks like from the front and then I start box selecting areas and pulling them around. And remember you can go into your side view by pressing 3 on your numpad and then I can extrude for the trunk down the outline. For the tusks I created a loop cut and then I extruded in on that one face so I had an area that was the right size for the tusk and then pulled it out with an, another extrusion and then we can trace down the tusk for the rest of it. And now we really want the legs to be less blocky don't we? So we can go in and do some loop cuts as needed. Another tool which you might find useful is the knife tool. So you can come out from here, press K and go around your object with the knife tool. You can still rotate whilst using the knife tool. and press enter to finish your cut. For the tail, I can see that it comes out from this angle, so I can grab again this face and extrude, make it come down a bit, and then extrude out, and then go back to the side view get this down a fair bit and start manipulating it from here. So from here it's pretty much just you fiddling about, uh, figuring out where things should be. Always go back to reference images like I'm doing here and just look up on the internet for different elephant shapes. Uh, the ears I, th I really had to look at closely and figure out exactly where they were going to come from and it's just observation and using your reference images and then coming up with something nice.
And there we have it, a low poly elephant, and you can do the same with any animal. Hope this helps.